we're going to do some probability. Okay, we've done all this practice where we have been counting the number of ways to do certain things, and now we finally want to find some probability. Okay, so it says at the top of the page, in complex probability problems, the counting methods covered so far are useful in counting both the sample space and the event space. Okay, so we're going to be using permutations and combinations to help us find the total number of ways, which we know we need for like the bottom of our probability fraction, and also what are the favourable outcomes, which we put on the top of our probability fraction, right? You remember that old formula, the probability is the number of favourable outcomes over the number of possible outcomes? Still going to be using that, okay? As discovered previously, the two questions that need to be asked in each of these problems are, are the selections ordered or unordered? We always have to be on the lookout for that. Is it a permutation or a combination? So is the order important? And so ordered is permutation, unordered is combination. And if it's unordered, is repetition allowed or not? We've always got to worry about whether we can repeat letters or numbers. Sometimes a range of different methods are required to determine the event space. And that's what we've been doing for the last five exercises is learning the different ways of counting our possibilities, okay? So it's all going to, could all come into these questions here. So into the examples. In a hand of poker, five cards are dealt from a regular deck of 52 cards. Find the total number of possible hands if there are no restriction. Okay, so that's a good place to start. If we're going to be doing... Yep. Let me finish my sentence. If we're going to be doing probability, we always need to know the total number of ways first, right? So there are 52 cards in a deck. The order that they're dealt out in is not important. So it's going to be a combination. And we're dealing five cards to each person. So 52C5 would be the different different number of ways that you could deal out five cards to people. Now that's going to be quite a big number, as you would hope, because you think in poker there should be quite a lot of different ways to deal out those cards. So what is that? Two, five, two million five hundred ninety-eight thousand nine hundred sixty. Yeah, that number. Okay, so now we know the total number of ways. Shh, focus, talk later. What is the probability? Okay, you always have to now look out for that word, probability, that we're being dealt four kings. Okay, so not just four of a kind, four kings more specifically. How many kings are in the deck? Four. Four, and I need all four of them. The order that they're dealt in is not important, right? So we would go four and I need four of them, four C4. But we're not just dealing four cards, we are dealing five cards, right? If the four kings, I've already selected those, how many cards are left? 48. 48 and I need one more card. So 48 C1 for the extra card that I need to be dealt. It doesn't matter what that is, we don't care as long as we get our four kings. Okay, now that will give us the total number of ways but remember, because this is probability, we want to put that over our total. Instead of writing the 2 million blah, 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 I will write it down as 52C5 again. Okay? And if you type that fraction into your calculator, you will hopefully get this answer, 48 over 2598960. So, yes, it's very small. Very small chance of getting four kings, um, because that's, I actually worked these out as percentages as well to try and see what so that is. It was 0.0018 percent chance. Uh, does that simplify? Yeah, we should simplify it. What does it simplify to? 1 over 54145. 54145? Yeah. Thanks. Great. Okay, next one. So now we're like finding the chance of what's going to happen. Yes, so we want to write as a probability, that's right. Is that what we've been doing the whole time? In this exercise, yes. The other exercises, we were just practicing counting the number of ways, and now we want to do them as probabilities. All right, part two, we want two clubs and three spades, so just to do one thing at a time. Let's focus on the two clubs. How many clubs are in the deck? 13 clubs, so there's four suits, there's 13 in each of the suits, right? Yeah. And I need two, so 13 C2. Times, let's do the spades. So again, there's 13 spades, and this time I need three of them. Okay, and again, that goes over the total. 
52C5. Does anyone have a simplified answer for that? 143. 143? 1660. 1660? Yeah. 1660. Oh, there's three sixes in there, thanks. 16660. Cool. So, what? I was listening to you. So, in the other exercises. There's, we don't put it over the total. No, now that's we right. Now we are. Okay. Yeah. So when it asks for probability, we want it over the total. Over the total, correct. It's like 85. All right, part three. All the cards are one colour. Now, we don't know if they're going to be red or black. So there is two choices to start with. We have to choose red or black. Then, let's say we choose red out of those two options. There is going to be 26 red cards, C, and I want five red cards. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Choose the, choose the colour first, and then 26 C5 over the total. 52 C5 again. Wait, why is it over two times? Because first of all, we had to choose. We didn't know whether we wanted black or red, because it's the two different colours. So first of all, we choose the colour, two choices for that. And then so uh, then I said, let's say that we act, we choose red. There's 26 red. I need to choose five. It'd be the same if I chose black. If I chose black, it'd still be 26 C5. Okay, so two, 203. And 53 over 4,990. 4,998. 5% chance, that's right. Really? All of the one colour. Oh, not 5% chance. All right, part four, four of the same kind. Now that means like four sevens or four tens, four queens, four, but we just have, like we had four kings before, but this could be anything the same. Times it by four at the start? Not four, 13. 13. Is it the same as four kings? Yeah, that's right. So there is 13 different numbers slash letters that you can choose from in your pack of cards. Then, once you've selected that, it is exactly the same as doing four kings. So you want four C4 for choosing all four of them. Is that just one? Plus, no, it's, yes, yeah, sorry, it is Plus. one. Then it is, I need to pick one more card that I don't care what it is. So 48 C1. All over. All over the total. Say it louder. What's the answer? Uh, 1 over 4165. Um, 4165? Great. All right, and last one of these, three aces and two kings. So there's four aces in the deck, and I need three of them. So 4C3 times. Now I need two kings. Again, there's four to start with, and I need two of them. Over 52C5. Did anyone get an answer for me? Uh, one over 108,290. 108,290. 290, that's what you said? Yep. Great. Okay, on to the next page. Example two. A three-digit number is formed from the digits 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. No repetition is allowed. Okay, so once a letter's been used, we can't use it again. Find the probability that the number is 473. Now, 473 is just one, because it is one very specific number. It is one of the possibilities. Is this a permutation or a combination question? Combination. Oh, did you two say different things? Perm. Perm, Perm. yes. Yeah. Permutation, because we're putting these numbers in order. Oh. 473 is different to 374, right? The order that you put these number, numbers in is important. So first of all, we need the total. We need the total number of arrangements before we can do a probability. Okay? So I have got one, two, three, four, five numbers. And I am putting three of them in order. So 5P3. And that means that there is 60 different arrangements of those numbers in order. Okay? Now, as I said before, now this could be a little bit confusing. Maybe I'll write prob. I don't want to write the letter P because it might look like a permutation. Okay? So the probability is 
That 473 was just one possibility. It's already in order for me. It is just one out of those 60. Okay? Part B. Find the probability that the number is odd. It has to end in three. It means it has to end in the three. Where's my highlighter gone? The three, the five, or the seven. Yes, Isaac. That's right. Three fifths to find the number of ways. So the number of odd is going to be three fifths because three of them are odd times by that 60. Okay, there is another way to do it. Do you want to know the other way as well? The other way we did it before was if the last digit is the one that's important, all right, so this is another way of thinking about it, or we could do it like this. The last digit, I have three choices, so three. Once that last digit has been chosen, I then go back and think about the first digit. How many numbers can I choose from for the first digit? Four numbers left. How many numbers can I choose for the second position? Three. And that makes 36. Same deal. Okay? I still need to write that as a probability. Okay, I've found the number of ways. There's 36 ways. I just have to put that over the total and simplify it down. So three fifths is the answer, as you kind of guessed. You knew from the beginning because it was three fifths of the. I kind of looked at the top and said that there's three odd numbers and two even numbers. True. The odds of that probability. Odd number. We could have done that. Answer? Yeah, we could have yes. done that, couldn't we? The, yes. That, but that doesn't tell you that the odd numbers at the end. No it does because I placed that one first. So I'm saying I placed that last digit. I had three choices for that last digit, and it didn't matter what the other two digits were, which if they were odd or even. It's all about that last digit. If a number is odd, isn't it? Well, there's nothing to tell you the order of them at all. For <laughs> this one, we did the um, the different like we did. The no, in the other one. Oh, because I didn't do a permutation, you mean? Yeah. Instead of doing it as a permutation, because I had to worry about odd or even, I was doing it more of like a, how we did the factorial, where I'm going, I'm placing that, then I'm placing that, then I'm placing that. Okay? Because I had to make sure I was placing an odd number in that last spot. I couldn't do it just as a straight permutation. Because permutation just says, I want to put those three things in order, but it doesn't. it's not going to do odd or even for you. Okay, so because I had that, I had to do it more of the multiplication principle. That's still putting them in order. Remember, that's still putting things in order. Yeah, but so 3 over 5 times 60, like, yep. what does that do? That was a shortcut that we learned a few lessons back when we said <laughs> if we have, um, if we've got five numbers and three of them are odd, the shortcut is just to say three-fifths of them are going to be odd because there's three three out of five chance way of putting that digit in the last spot. It was just a shortcut with it. Let's keep going. We'll come back to it, okay? All right. Part C. All right. The number is divisible by five. This one's actually similar. Okay. So there's two choices of the ways that you could do this. You could do the, like, my, my number of odd there with my three-fifths. Instead, I could do one-fifth because I have one number in there. That is divisible by five. The digit would have to end with a five, wouldn't it? Right? So one fifth, which is going to be the answer, but let's just keep with our counting the number of ways part. One fifth of 60 is going to be 12, which means our probability is 12 over 60, which obviously is also one fifth. Okay? Part D. The number starts and ends Starts with a four, sorry, and ends with a seven. So we've locked the four in, we've locked the seven in. We don't really need to count them. They've already been done for us. Or you could go one times one if you wanted to put numbers in there. The only thing left to choose is that middle digit. How many numbers left are there to choose from? Three. And I need to pick one of them. So three P1. So it's just equal to three. To do it as a probability, I put the 3 on the top and the 60 on the bottom. So it's 1 in 20 chance. The number contains the digit 3. Now, again, there is a couple of different ways you could do this question. 
Probably what is easiest to do is to try and pick your three numbers first and then worry about putting them in order, okay? So if the number, Isaac, can you save that for later, please? If the number has to contain the number three, one of my numbers has already been chosen. I still have to pick two more, okay? So there is four numbers left. I'm not worrying about the order yet. I'm gonna go four, C, I'm not worrying about the order yet, and I'm just gonna pick two more. Now I'm doing this because the next one, I wanna do in the same style, okay? And it'll be easier if we do these two the same way. The, then once I've chosen my three numbers, that's the number of ways of putting them, how do I put three things in order? I would times that by three factorial, okay? To put them in order, three factorial. Okay, putting three things in order, we do three factorial, which makes that a 36. Okay, and then we do our probability. So 36 on the top, 60 on the bottom, and that simplifies to three over five. Okay, if we keep that same kind of method, that will help us with F here. The number now contains the digits three and the digits five. Okay, but we don't know where they're positioned, which is why I probably could have done a permutation for the last one. If you want me to show you that, I can show you that later. But this one, it's way harder to think of all the places where I could put the three and the five, right? So we have to choose one more digit to start with. Don't know where it's going, so not placing the order. How many digits do I have left to choose from? I've chosen the three and the five, so there's only three left and I need to pick one. Once I've chosen that one extra number, I now need to put my three selected numbers in order, which means I multiply by three factorial again. Okay, and that makes 18 ways of putting those in order, then the probability part. So hopefully the probability part is the easy part. Just, that, just don't forget to do it. Surprising how much we get focused on counting the number of ways and then we forget to do the probability part at the end. Okay, G, the number contains the digit three or five. Now I'm gonna actually interpret that question and maybe I'm taking a bit of license here. I'm gonna mean, take that that means or both because otherwise that's a way more involved question. Okay, it can involve the three and the five. So it has to have a three or a five or it can have both. Maybe that was worded badly, I know. But we're gonna make that assumption for this question. If it has the number three or the five, how many things left do I need to pick from? Two out of four, not two out of three. Yes. Um, would it be easier to say, one, three, because it could have one, three, or one, five, or both, both of them, it would be easier to find the ways of not having either of them and then subtracting it. Okay, so let's do that. So we're not gonna, we're gonna have no, no three or five. We wanna leave both of them out. How many numbers do we have that are not a three or a five? Three. Three, and how many do I need to put in order? Three, three. great. So that is a total of three P three, which is six. Okay, so that means for it to contain a three or a five, what do I have to do? Subtract that from the total, that's right. So 60 was my total. If I subtract off the six, which is the ways where those two numbers are left uh, are in, that means that there is 54 ways to have one or both of them in that arrangement. Don't forget probability. Probability. See, so this is why I didn't want to do the harder version because I'm running out of room as it is. Probability is 54 out of 60. Nine out of 10. Nine out of 10. Oh. Yes, I did two times three times 52. And you got the same thing? Yeah. No. No, you didn't? No. Oh. Sometimes there is multiple different ways to get, and that's the other frustrating thing with this topic, is that somebody could do like E and F there. You can do those questions with permutations and you can do them with combinations. There is often multiple different ways to get to the right answer. And that's what can be um, difficult for some people to understand because different people think about problems differently. Okay? 
All right, H, last one. The number is greater than 500. So how many numbers could I pick to be the first digit? Three. Three. So let's place that one. There's three ways of choosing the first digit. I then have to choose two more letters. I have four to pick from because I've chosen one already. So 4P2 for the remaining two digits. And that gives me a total of 36 ways of getting a number greater than 500. Then the probability. So probability is 36 over 60, which is 3 over 5 ways.